All right, today I'm going to cover a scan to CAD workflow inside of Control X. So the idea behind this workflow is I have a CAD model and I'm going to pre-set up my inspection workflow without any scan data. And then I'm going to take a file, an STL file, OBJ or POI, some sort of mesh file, and import that later and do the evaluations at the end. Um, so today we're going to just cover how you can uh, do this workflow uh, without any uh, measured information and you can set it up. So uh, the idea there is if I have somebody that wants to set up an inspection and then give that over, give the file over to another department or another person internally at the company, that is going to do the scanning and evaluation. You can do that ahead of time inside of the software. So to start out, I have this CAD model that I brought in. I just uh, did a drag and drop with this Parasolid uh, XT file. I, I pulled this in, and by default, because it's a CAD file, Control X will throw that into the reference data. Um, if I have scan data, it'll automatically bring that into the measured data area. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, with any scan data set it's not going to come in aligned. So we need to establish our alignments um, before we go ahead and create some different evaluations and measurements. Um, by default we usually start with the an initial alignment. So what the initial alignment is going to do is <clears throat> best fit the scan data to the CAD model and just overlay it on top of the CAD model. And the reason why we do this is it makes it easier behind the scenes for the software to then create corresponding areas um, if I'm going to do other types of alignments if it's already laying on top of the, uh, the CAD model. So for example, uh, we did our initial alignment. If I want to do a datum alignment, um, I can open the alignment tool and then click the different faces that I want to use to create that alignment. And so what's, what it's going to do is use the pair 1, pair 2, and pair 3 here to create a feature-based alignment, a datum alignment. Now over in the tree on the left-hand side, you'll see these happen in order. So the top alignment will be the initial alignment and then it'll do a datum alignment after. So if I was to do another, a third alignment, like uh, maybe a RPS alignment, it would then do an RPS alignment at the end. Um, so these happen in an order over here on the left hand side. So after I complete this um, alignment, I like to clean up my display by hiding the, the, the tags, uh, by hiding the alignment itself. So if I just turn the eyeball off there, um, we now have uh, a essentially a virtual alignment. <clears throat> the next step that I like to to do in a basic demonstration is do a 3D comparison. So with the 3D comparison, um, we have all of the scan data measurements in space relative to the CAD model. Let's go ahead and graph the deviation of the whole data set to the scan. Uh, to the CAD file. So when I come into 3D Compare, the first step is going to have some options that I, I rarely change for a basic demonstration. It's going to do a shape method with the shortest projection direction. What I do is go to the next page and I will turn on Use Specific Tolerance. Um, and then sometimes I will adjust the color bar. Um, so the the color bar information here, the max and min, those correlate to the top and bottom extremes of the color bar. And then the use specific tolerance um, is going to control the green area here on that bar. So if I come in and I said do a 0.2 instead, you'll see that it makes it wider. And then I can hit OK. So we just told the software once we've done an alignment, that we're also going to do a 3D comparison. So you'll see a 3D comparison over here on the left hand side. Now 
<clears throat> after I do the 3D compare, it's a nice pretty picture showing the deviation uh, on the part, but sometimes you want to make specific measurements in, in different areas. So in order to do that, we do these comparison points. So if I click the comparison point, um, the way this works is I can just click on different spots on the CAD model and it's going to give me the deviation in those areas. Um, so if I just click those areas and then hit OK, you'll see that I have uh, no results yet because I don't have my scan data. And then they're, they're pushed all the way up to the edge of the screen. If I don't want them out there, I can change in the toolbar up here to snapped. And I can actually then control their location just by dragging and dropping where I want them to be for maybe reporting screenshot purposes. So if I drag these off in these directions and I click on the comparison point uh, analysis in the toolbar over here, if I come down to the bottom you'll see that this is what it's going to throw in our final report when we get to that stage. But if I want to reassign that viewport I can do that by capturing the current view and if I just hit reassign viewpoint and then as usual uh, I like to clean up my display after each uh, process so I'll go ahead and turn off those control points uh, comparison points um, and then move on to the next thing so from here I usually start to show a few different um, 3D dimensioning uh, type tools so in the quick start bar you can grab it from over here, the Smart Dimension tool. What the Smart Dimension tool does is, based on my selection, it'll assume what I want to measure. So, for example, if I roll over this sphere here and I just click and then click again, because I only selected one CAD face and it happens to be a sphere, it will automatically measure the radius or diameter depending on how I set it and then if I want to change the tolerance I can do so and if I just hit OK we just measured we're we're telling the software I just want to know what the diameter of that sphere is and does it fit within this tolerance um, again if I come over to the smart dimension tool and select a sphere and then maybe a second sphere it's going to make the assumption that I want to make a 3D dimension between those two different objects. And you see here that those spheres are on different levels. So if I want to measure from the center point of one sphere to the center point of the other sphere, it automatically gives me that. But if I want to measure based on an alignment, I can click the alignment tab here or checkbox. And you'll see here that it's going to measure only in X, only in Y, or you could say only in Z. In this instance, I'm just going to tell that I want it to do it in X. And I'll just drag this up again. And then another interesting thing is that right now it's still measuring from center point to center point, but if I want it to measure from max to max, so what it's going to do, as you can see here, is it'll measure from the highest point to the highest point only in the X direction. Um, simulating as kind of like putting calipers around the outside but only in one axis and giving me that dimension. <clears throat> so the same tool will work for angles as well so if I go ahead and I click on this plane and that plane because I selected two planar surfaces that are not in parallel it's going to automatically pull out an angle measurement um, and then, for example, I can do some other things like cylinders. So if I come in here and I want to measure those cylinders, I can do that. And then if I want to measure this slot back here, I can come in and I can select the CAD face for that cylinder, the CAD face for that cylinder, and pull up a measurement for that slot. And then I can hit OK. Now if I just want to position my part for the screenshot, so I'll just position the part there, click on the 3D GD&T 
um, the view that I just created and I can hit reassign just like I did before and then I'll go ahead and turn that off for now. The next thing that I like to do is create a 2D dimension view. So the 3D dimension is, is really nice but maybe I want to cut a cross section through and make dimensions that way. So if I click over to the dimensions tab and right now you see that we're in a 3D mode but if I want to go over to a 2D mode I can click the 2D icon then hit plus and it's going to ask me what my base plane needs to be in order to create the 2D cross section. So I'm going to grab this top face here and then you'll notice that there is a blue there's a blue arrow there. If I just want to click and drag that up about five millimeters here, what we're showing here is that we are going to click on that base plane, offset up five millimeters, and create a 2D dimension plane from there. Now, once I'm in this 2D view, the tools work very similar to before. I can grab a linear dimension, and you'll see that I'm creating a 2D dimension between those two circles. And just like before, if I want the alignment to be only in the X direction, I can do so. And then you see that I do have max if I need to. If I need to do an angle dimension, um, maybe between here and here, I can pull out an angle, create that. And just like we did before, if I want to measure the slot, I can pull a dimension from here. And then in this instance, maybe I want to know the max to max. So I'm going to click max to max and then hit OK. And then when I'm done, I come down to this, uh, this box right here. The X will clear out that cross section and not accept any of the measurements. And then the other side will accept all those dimensions. So <clears throat> from here, if I want to turn my cross sections off, I can go ahead and turn that off from the eyeball. Um, and then what I like to do for the final analysis is um, switch back over to 3D and then create one more 3D uh, GD&T view. So I'll create a new one by hitting the plus sign. What I like to do in here is call out some datums so I'll click on the top surface and make that datum A, the side make it datum B, this side make it datum C. And the reason why is I want to create some GD&T callouts just to show that we have that ability in here as well. So by default I'm going to go ahead and maybe uh, start with a flatness. That's a good uh, basic one to start off with. So if I click on that top face and say I want to create a flatness callout and drag it out. If I want to override the uh, tolerance, I can do so from there. And then if I want to do, let's say, a surface profile call out, I can click on that and select the top surface and create a surface profile call out. And then if I need to create a um, true position, that's another popular one people will ask. So if I click on this sphere, and drag that out. Now this is where the datums come into play. If I want to set my true position to this datum reference frame, I can do so. And I can even add the material conditions there and then hit OK. So you see here we added um, the material condition, maximum material condition, and then we said tie that true position to datum reference frame A, B, then C. So along those same lines, I'll go ahead and click on the GD&T view, reassign the viewport, and then I am ready to go ahead and bring in some scan data. So at this point, this is where I would save the file and give it over to somebody else if, if they were the one that was doing the, the reporting. But in this instance, what I'm going to do is go ahead and come over and grab my scan A so I have three separate scans of three different parts and I'm going to drag in this scan A. So all I have to do from this point forward is just hit rebuild and the software will automatically do the alignments that we called out and create all those dimensions and annotations that we called out from there.
So now, if, you, if I zoom in, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the scan data to make it easier to see here. Um, but these are all the different things that we've measured to this point. So if I turn on my control points, there are all the different individual deviations of the control points. So you can see those. Um, and it will remember those same locations every single time. Now if I turn on my GD&T uh, dimensions 1, you'll see that those are those dimensions that I created. And then here are the results for the GD&T callouts that I created. And then if I turn that off, here's my cross section and its dimension. So once I have all of those, I can come over and create a report. So if I come over to the quick start and I say generate report, everything on the left hand side is everything that's in the document. We automatically populate everything to be reported on the right hand side. But if I don't want to report on, let's say, the initial alignment, I can just throw that over to the left and it'll take that out of the list. Once I do that, I can hit generate and the software will open a uh, report uh, template designer. So this gives you the uh, ability to edit and save the any changes that you're making to this report. So if I scroll down through here, if I needed to change um, some views or some, some of the uh, table locations. Um, I can do all those things in here and then save that as a template and then it'll recall that from there. So right now you're, as I scroll down through here you're seeing all the results for my cross-section, all the results for my GD&T views. So once I have that report, that's typically the end of a demonstration but Sometimes I like to show the ability to create another, how, how automated this process is, and create another inspection routine. So on the left hand side you'll notice that I have this result number one. Inside of Control X we have the ability to have multiple inspection routines inside of one document. So if I right click on result number one and say duplicate to result number two, now I have an exact duplicate of the result. But if I want to just go ahead and delete the scan data out of that second duplicate, um, now I have no results in here. I can come over to that scan B and pull that in, a separate part, and then hit rebuild. And now in one document I can have scan A and scan B and have the results from both of those uh, inspections and then we have some tools to show those side by side inside of the document. So once this finishes calculating you'll notice um, that I will have the, the result 2 and result number 1 and they're slightly different results because they're two different scans but if I come over to tools and I go to result navigator I can see the, the results side by side. So if I want to filter out and show only my GD&T view 1 side by side, you'll notice that the results are slightly different. Like the slot here fails and the slot here is passing but marginal. And if I come over to my comparison points, for example, you can see that I get some different uh, results for my comparison points, 0.1943 and 0.17. So it's nice to be able to show your results side by side and evaluate more than one uh, result. So you can troubleshoot maybe what's going on in your manufacturing process. You could even use this to just change your alignments to see if the same part passes or fails depending on how it's aligned. That's another reason why it would be nice to have multiple results in one file. So that completes the basic demonstration of a scan to CAD workflow inside of Control-X.